Hi friends, thank you for joining me for our weekly pastor's update. As we head towards Palm Sunday, our celebration this weekend, I think of Jesus being a trailblazer of protest to empirical systems that oppress the poor, using violence as its main tool. Violence comes in many forms, right? There's systemic, physical, emotional, or even religious violence. When Jesus rides the donkey into Jerusalem as a new kind of nonviolent prince of peace and king, he understood that it would be an affront to a Roman system that relied heavily on war horses, land grabs, nation building, privilege, intimidation, violence, power, and narcissistic kings like Herod and Pilate. Jesus' tools were those of love, forgiveness, compassion, justice, and generosity. Jesus is hailed with palm branches, praise, and recognition with the streets lined with people who were ready for a new vision of leadership, new compassion, and hope, and a brighter future for the world. This was especially good news to the poor who suffered the most under structured power models that King Herod and Pilate used. We live in a world where our systems are constantly and consistently structuring power, power models that disproportionately impact the poor. This week, I took a homeless woman to a hotel paid for by DHS. Before the clerk gave her the key to her room, he asked her to review a paper that said, if you are placed here by DHS, your room may not have a TV or refrigerator or a microwave, and there's no complimentary breakfast for you. What a message to send to the poor. I can't tell you how enraged and deeply saddened I was all at the same time. I challenged this outright discrimination, and we received a room with these things in it. It left me thinking of all the times that I paid a discounted price and was never treated this way, or told that I was not entitled to these basic amenities. In that moment, I realized the harm that we can cause in how we structure power models against the poor. Those of us who hold privilege never have to know, never have to know about or experience such assaults to our dignity. It helped me understand why Jesus on Palm Sunday fought so hard to send the right message of inclusion, of love, of healing, of justice, of solidarity and belonging to the poor, the marginalized, and the oppressed of our world. This week, here is our Holy Week schedule. Holy Thursday, oh, no, sorry, I gotta do it again, sorry. The following is our Holy Week schedule. Palm Sunday, Reverend Seeley will be preaching. On Holy Thursday at seven o'clock, Mark Potter will be preaching for us. On Good Friday at 12 noon, Father Jim will be our preacher, and we will be doing the reading of the Passion instead of singing it. Good Friday at 7 p.m. in the evening, we will have the performance of Seven Last Words with our youth group. And then finally, on Easter Sunday morning, we will have two liturgies, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. 9 a.m. and 11 a.m., and I will be preaching. We send our condolences this week to Ellie and Duane Minor on the death of Ellie's brother, Stanley Kern. Ellie, we want you to know that we send our hearts to you, our thoughts to you. We're praying for you and your family as you go through this very difficult time of loss. We also want you to know that we will have the celebration of life for two of our parishioners this Saturday, April 9th, 
at 10 a.m., we will have the celebration of life for Richard Cahoon. And at 1 o'clock here at Spiritus, we'll have the celebration of life for Bernie Morehouse. So we we'll hope that you'll join us uh, for those celebrations. Um, and that will be here at Spiritus Christi. Well, friends, may the Spirit of Christ accompany you this week with peace. And until next week, I'll see you for our weekly pastor's update.